Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. Now in this episode, we're gonna be fixing Sam Crack's once burnt F430 Ferrari. I'll show you how it got to this point. Now this is how the Ferrari came in. You can see the quarter panel is pretty much burnt off. Now once we got it, the quarter panel was already on and the candy man had it at his shop. And basically what he did is he got it all sanded down and once it was sanded down, he used an epoxy. Now, an epoxy is good because it's going to create great adhesion and hold out. Now, using it on aluminum is just as fine as using it on metal. It's always a good idea to start with an epoxy first. Now, once you get the epoxy down like he did, it's a good idea to really thoroughly let that dry. One, two, three days is a great idea for epoxy. They take a long time to dry. Once it was all dry, the bodywork was done over the seam, and then from there, it was a 2K urethane primer that was applied, and that's exactly when I showed up. And that's exactly how we got to this point right here. You can see that the quarter panel is in complete primer. Now, this will also get sealed down. You might notice here at the top that, well, there's no natural breaking line, so what do we have to do in order to do this properly? For edge to edge, we have to take it all the way over the roof, and you guessed it, that's right. We're gonna have to paint this whole entire quarter panel so that we don't have any open edge. And over here on the front door, that was burned in this area and we got everything nice and scuffed down. So we'll be doing a blend here on this door as well. And here's the part of the rocker panel. You can see that this was also a little bit burnt as well. So this got a full prime. And we're here with the Candyman and the Candyman's shop here at Mitchell Collision. And we're gonna get this thing all nice and fixed up. All right, so we got the Candyman here and he is doing the final scuff. Uh, he's using a super, super fine foam pad. Now on the actual clear coat, we're gonna be using an 800 crit and we'll get it that much closer to moving into the spray roof. So let's get rolling on that right now. So we're gonna go ahead and take that camera reading, but before you wanna make sure you buff at least a little spot on the actual panel. And this is gonna make sure that there's no contaminants and we're getting a true reading using the camera. Now we're here with the candy man and we're gonna go ahead and check that color that he just did the camera reading on. Now he put the camera in and obviously there's a lot of selections that he can use. And he's gonna go ahead and use that camera reading to see exactly what it pulled up. So what do we have here? So we've got a lot of variants and uh, PPG's got a new software out that allows you to see the actual spray out card. 
what the camera sees and what they want you to use. All right here, so this is the uh, spray out card. This is what the camera seen on the actual Ferrari on this side of the line. And then this is what they have for a uh, mix for it. So it's looking like a lighter Vivitor 27 times and uh, it's a two reading. So two is very good. And this new software actually lets you see the spray out card on the flop, the face, and different angles. That way you can see what you have. And on metallics, you'll actually see the metallic in the spray out cards. So on the right side is gonna be the color we're gonna spray on the left side is the original and that definitely is a blendable match right there. We are gonna check it because you always wanna double check and make sure that the uh, color is uh, good. All so right. don't, just don't roll with it. Let's go ahead and spray it out. Now the first thing that any great painter will do is mix up the color first and see how many coats it will take in order to get the true color. We're gonna see if we need to seal into the doors and now what he did is he put one coat on this spray out card. Now, if you look at the original, you see how dark it is. That's kind of unheard of to cover that well in just one coat. So with this said, there's gonna be no need to seal the doors or seal the leading edge of the door so we don't have any sort of issues. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start bringing in the parts into the spray booth. Over here, we have a pretty big spray booth pretty much a double base. So we'll be able to put the parts on one side and then we'll put the actual vehicle on the other and we'll be able to paint everything at one time. Once the color is verified, the parts along with the car are then finally moved into the paint booth. Once the vehicle was inside of the booth, it was put on jack stands and the wheels were removed from the vehicle in order to gain full access to the inside wheel wells, making sure that paint was covered exactly where it needed to be. This set of lug bolts is like a lot. Well, we noticed when we had the wheel off on the other side yesterday, it was like a run. I remember, I think Sam had to send a computer out to some place to have it rebuilt. Oh, yeah, exactly. The candy man and myself, along with the team, are going to start the masking process. But first, lay out a piece of tape and border the whole area. We'll be using a combination of paper and plastic. We're using paper in those big areas in order to be able to conform it where we need to. We'll go ahead and back mask certain areas where we want the plastic or the tape to stick to. The tape job is one of the most important parts of a clean paint job. An old school technique used by professional painters still to this day is using your bare hand to feel the actual panel itself. You'll be able to pick up any sort of debris or imperfection in the panel previous to painting. A good painter will always double down and make sure that their edges are nice and clean and nothing sticking out or getting in the way of when the paint lays down. This is your last chance to get it right. Once the panels are all perfected, then it's time to get it clean. They're using PPG products over here at Mitchell Collision, and they'll go ahead and use a two rag method, using one rag to wipe on the wax and grease remover, and then another to get it dry. Wiping it until it's completely flashed off the panel is a way to get a nice clean job. One last final inspection is done 
to make sure that there's absolutely nothing that remains on the panel. The candy man is now ready to lay down the sealer coat. He'll go ahead and get this mixed up and then he'll apply it to the vehicle first but he needs to make sure the booth is all ready to go. He puts the proper settings in and then he reaches for a sealer gun and he'll apply a nice coat of sealer and allow it to flash for a good 20 minutes and then we can move on to the color. Think of sealer as a primer that does not get sanded. Basically it's a thinned out primer. It's going to help with your adhesion. It's going to help out with your holdout of the actual products that go on top of it. And it's going to help you get a good coverage of that base coat. By applying your sealer we know that we can cover this base coat within just a couple coats and we shouldn't have any issues of hiding. Sealed parts should be given a good 15 to 20 minutes before they are top coated with the color. There's no need to sand the sealer, but if you do have any dirt, make sure you put one coat of base on it first and then nib out the base coat, not the sealer. Due to the fantastic coverage when we use the spray out card, there's no need to seal into the store. So now the candy man is using a blending additive. A blending additive is going to help once again smooth out the edge of that blend of the sealer and also it's going to give a great foundation for the base coat to lay on top of. We are now ready for that Ferrari Red. We'll apply about two coats of base coat. From here on out, the candy man asks us to step back a little bit. We want to make sure this clean paint job comes out clean and that there is no interference from anyone else in the spray booth. Spraying in a professional booth has its positives. You can use heat, and heat is used to make sure that that base coat is completely cured. We're getting a clear coat mixed up, and if the base coat is not completely cured, trapping solvents in the base coat can mean dieback and pinching, a loss of gloss. So make sure that the base coat, especially a water-based base coat, is completely cured. We're mixing up our clear coat. We'll apply two coats of clear coat to the finish. If you want to apply one more, make sure that you wait enough time. Also, the candy man is making sure we have proper coverage. Turning the lights off and using a sun gun or a light equivalent gun that mimics the sun's rays will show you if you have complete coverage. The first coat of clear coat is applied medium wet. Get full coverage, make sure all of your bases are covered, but if it's not 100% beautiful, don't worry. The second coat, you can smooth things out. You wanna make sure that all your crevices and areas that are hard to get to are wetted out on the first coat. Otherwise, on the second, it might be a little bit too late. By having your bases covered on the first coat, your second coat of clear coat will just lay in beautifully. Again, without any natural breaking point in the roof panel, you must take your paint all the way to the nearest breaking point within the door jam. 
We'll go ahead and let the candy man finish this one up and see how beautiful it looks when it's done. Now, once the Ferrari got all assembled, it looked fantastic. Awesome color match. Great shine. The Candyman really did a great job. Guys, this is Brian and Candyman. Sam Crack, thanks again. From Paint Society, reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. We'll see you guys on the next episode.